if you don't deport them, how do you send them home? Well, the answer is self-deportation, which is people decide that they can do better by going home because they can't find work here because they don't have legal documentation to allow them to work here. Of course you get rid of Obamacare. That's the easy one. But there are others. Planned Parenthood, we're going to get rid of that. Does uh, Governor Romney support the Lily Ledbetter Act? And we'll get back to you on that. The, the way I would say about foreign policy is, you know, I've been in Congress for a number of years. That's more experience than Barack Obama had when he came into office. You know, I've, I've voted to send people to war. Uh, the question is, if I were elected and Congress were to pass the DREAM Act, would I veto it? And the answer is yes. That trustee indicated last week when he was asked about this, he said that he wanted to diversify the investments that I had. And for a while, he had money in a Swiss account reported in the U.S., full taxes paid on it, U.S. taxes. There's nothing wrong with that. If you're looking for free stuff you don't have to pay for, Vote for the other guy. That's what he's all about, okay? Keep the burden down on middle income taxpayers. $100,000 middle income? Well, no, middle income is $200,000, $250,000 and less. And he has things he's willing to do with them. He's not willing to tell the American people. This is to Russia. This is, without question, our number one geopolitical foe. You know, if people had been in Massachusetts under Governor Romney's health care plan, they would have had health care. Um, there are a lot of people losing their jobs and losing their health care in President Obama's economy. We've always encouraged young people. Take a, take a shot, go for it. Take a risk, get the education. Borrow money if you have to from your parents. Take a risk, get the education. Borrow money if you have to from your parents. I want to beat Barack Obama. I don't want to give the Democrats a nice little present of having multiple releases. We're going to have one release. Yeah, that's, that's exactly what I said. My, my, the headline you read, which is said, let Detroit go bankrupt. Should there be aggressive, seek them out, find them and arrest them as Sheriff Arpaio advocates? You know, I, I think you see a model here in Arizona higher income recipients, lower benefit, a premium support program which allows people to buy either current standard Medicare or a private plan. And this is the proposal which uh, uh, Congressman Paul Ryan has adopted. It's a proposal which I believe is absolutely right on. Isn't it a hard argument to make if you're saying, you know, like, okay, he inherited this recession and he took a bunch of steps to try to turn the economy around and now we're seeing some more jobs, but vote against him anyway? Isn't that a hard argument to make? Is that a stark enough contrast? But if you got a better one, Laura, it just happens to be the truth. Congressman Ryan's budget makes those same cuts to Medicare. How do you square that? Well, first of all, Congressman uh, Ryan has joined my campaign. Well, I think you hit a reset button uh, for the fall campaign. Everything changes. It's almost like an Etch-a-Sketch. You can kind of shake it up and we start all over again. I think people recognize that I'm not a partisan Republican, that I'm someone who is moderate and that my, my views are progressive. And I'm not going to be bound by traditional party labels or traditional party practices. I have a very different view than most Republicans, the old traditional Republicans. I'm a lot more like my mom and dad in that regard. And, uh, and so my agenda is different than traditional Republicans. I fought against long odds in a deep blue state, but I was a severely conservative Republican governor. Uh, what's the effective rate I've been paying? Well, it's probably closer to the 15% rate than anything. I did go back and look at my taxes, and over the past 10 years, I never paid less than 13%. I think the most recent year is 13.6 or something like that. So I began when I was uh, oh, 15 or so and, and uh, have hunted uh, those kinds of varmints uh, since then more, more than two times. I support the Second Amendment. I, uh, I purchased a gun when I was a young man. I've been a hunter uh, pretty much all my life. There's, there's some scrutiny over that comment, in part because uh, he said, I've been a hunter pretty much all my life, and he's been hunting twice. Um, but I believe the world is getting warmer. I, 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 I can't prove that, uh, but I believe, based on what I read, that the world, world is getting warmer. Uh, and, and number two, I believe that humans contribute to that. There's a, there's a divergence of opinion on that. So do I think humans contribute to it? Yes. My, my view is that we don't know what's causing climate change on this planet. He also said at the time, it was not my desire to go off and serve in Vietnam. That was what he said in the 1990s. Then when he started running for president a decade later, he said this. He said, I longed in many respects to actually be in Vietnam and be representing our country there. And in some ways it was frustrating not to feel like I was there as part of the troops that were fighting in Vietnam. And that is, I will act to repeal Obamacare. Well, I'm not getting rid of all of health care reform. Of course, there are a number of things that I like in health care reform that I'm going to put in place. It's more than just giving someone an unemployment check. 
It's also helping those people with their health insurance while they've lost their jobs. And more important than just that unemployment check is to do what we can to give people a paycheck. I oppose the stimulus because it doesn't work. It didn't work. I have never supported the President's Recovery Act, all right, the stimulus. No time, nowhere, no how. Uh, I think there is need for economic stimulus. Uh, Americans have lost about $11 trillion in net worth. This has been a tough time. And, uh, and I know the president didn't cause this downturn, this recession. But he didn't make it better either. He made it worse. Well, of course it's getting better. Uh, uh, the economy always gets better after a recession. There's always a recovery. I believe that since Roe v. Wade has been the law for 20 years, that we should sustain and support it. And I sustain and support that law. I will preserve and protect a woman's right to choose and am devoted and dedicated to honoring my word in that regard. What I'd like to see happen would be for the Supreme Court to say, look, we're, we're gonna overturn Roe v. Wade, so I'm firmly pro-life. I was an independent during the time of Reagan Bush. I'm not trying to return to Reagan Bush. My positions don't talk about things that you suggest they talk about. This is not like a change in position, it's like a change in philosophy. That's not, that's not true at all. And, and I, there's no question that the older I get, the smarter, the smarter Ronald Reagan gets. Don't forget who it was that cut Medicare by $500 billion, and that was President Obama to pay for Obamacare. If Obamacare is allowed to be installed, Medicare will be rated by $716 billion. I want universal coverage. I want everyone in Massachusetts and in this country to have insurance. I think we ought to start by saying we're going to have portability. We're also going to make sure people can't be denied on the basis of pre-existing illness. To say, how do we get that last group covered? Because I think I'm convinced every American deserves coverage, and we're only going to really solve the, the spiraling rise in health care costs if everybody is part of a health care system. For those that have higher incomes, we expect them to have health insurance. And if they don't, we're going to withhold their tax refund or put in place other penalties to assure that everybody comes in the system. Obamacare was bad policy yesterday. It's bad policy today. Obamacare was bad law yesterday. It's bad law today. In the general election, it is different. In the general election, you don't have to be any one ideological thing in order to win over the country. But you have to not be a liar. Here's how else Mitt Romney is like an Etch-a-Sketch. It's not just speaking French. It is not just outsourcing jobs to China. It is not just fudging his conservatism. It's fudging everything all the time. The president takes $716 billion out of the Medicare trust fund to pay for Obamacare. The president's changes mean the annual increases insurance companies receive will be trimmed, hospital reimbursement rates will be reduced, and payments to home health care workers will also be cut back. But you did run marathons at some point? Yeah, but I can't do it anymore because my back is not that good. I just got to ask, what's your personal best? Uh, under three... I think, you know, high twos, high two, got two hours and 50 something. Mr. Ryan completed his single attempt at the marathon in four hours, one minute and 25 seconds. That's more than an hour slower than his original very specific claim. You had asked for stimulus money for your district. Is that accurate? No, Is I, that I report I accurate? I never asked for stimulus. I don't, I, I don't recall that. I haven't seen this report, so I really can't comment on it. At least five letters from his office to the secretaries of labor and energy have surfaced. They show Ryan not only advocating on behalf of companies in Wisconsin asking for money, they also show Ryan's office touting the jobs that can be created with the sort of stimulus money Ryan has opposed. You said of Mitt Romney, somebody who will lie to you to get to be president will lie to you when they are president. I have to ask you, are you calling Mitt Romney a liar? Yes. What they're trying to suggest is that I said that Barack Obama was responsible for our plant shutdown in Janesville. That is not what I was saying. That's what he said in 2008. Well, as it turned out, that plant didn't last another year. The GM line of manufacturing ended just before Christmas of 2008, a month before Obama became president. Is Mr. Ryan a compulsive liar? Well, given his egregious lies about the closure of a GM plant in Janesville, his lies about Medicare, the deficit and the downgrading of our credit rating, all suggest that Mr. Ryan has real problems telling the truth. We will reach across the aisle and find good people who like us, want to make sure this company deals with its challenges. 
I like being able to fire people who provide services to me. Mitt Romney was asked whether the London games looked ready. You know, it's hard to know just how well it would turn out. There are a few things that were disconcerting, the stories about the uh, private security firm not having enough people. When asked if he followed NASCAR racing, he blew his average guy cover. Let's listen to his own words. Not as closely as some of the most ardent fans, but I have some great friends that are uh, NASCAR uh, uh, team owners. I like seeing the uh, I like seeing the lakes. I love the lakes. Just something very special here. The Great Lakes, but also all the little inland lakes that that dot the uh, uh, the, the parts of Michigan. This feels good being back in Michigan. Uh, you know the uh, the trees are the right height. The uh, streets are just right. Many in Washington look to cut defense spending as the easy way out. That includes our current president. I'm in this race because I care about Americans. I I'm not concerned about the very poor. We have a safety net there. If it needs a repair, I'll fix it. I'm not concerned about the very rich. They're doing just fine. Join me in welcoming the next president of the United States, Paul Ryan. What, what you've listened to, in my view, and, and the speaker's rendition of history going back to 1978, his involvement in Washington, is, in my view, a perfect example of why we need to send to Washington someone who has not lived in Washington, but someone who's lived in the real streets of America. I know what it's like to, to worry whether you're going to get fired. There were a couple of times I wondered whether I was going to get a pink slip. I drive a Mustang and a, uh, and a Chevy pickup truck. Ann drives a, a couple of Cadillacs, actually. No one's ever asked to see my birth certificate. They know that this is the place that we were born and raised. I, I haven't, I'm not familiar precisely with exactly what I said, but I stand by what I said, whatever it was. And, uh, and with regards to, I'll, I'll go back and take a look at what was said there. <laughs> I'm not sure about these cookies. <laughs> they, don't, they don't look like you made them. Did you make those cookies? Did you? No, no. They came from the local 7-Eleven uh, bakery. bakery or wherever. When I heard it, I thought, oh my goodness, this guy has no idea. Romney puts in renovation plans basically to raise his already multi-million dollar house that's only about 3,000 square feet and replace it with an 8,000 square foot house with a gigantic basement. One of the distinguishing features, according to Politico, which broke the story nationally, a four-car garage with an elevator for the cars. But Ryan's budget not only gives the wealthy and corporations a $3 trillion tax cut, it cuts billions from social programs and adds to the military budget. Today, a group of religious leaders signed a joint statement condemning cuts. At a fundraiser, he asserted Israel's prospered more than the Palestinians, in part because of a superior culture. Palestinians called that bigotry. The fascination with taxes I paid, I find to be very uh, small-minded compared to the broad issues that we face. Yeah, I voted in the Democratic primary, as a lot of Republicans in Massachusetts do, because when there's no contest of significance on the Republican side, when you register as an independent, you can vote in the Democratic primary and vote against Bill Clinton. Governor, anything on brunch? I'll just say this, which is it's not, the, uh, not the language I would have used. The Associated Press reports that as a Mormon missionary in France, during the late 60s, he avoided the draft. It was one of four deferments that kept him from the war. You don't care about the U.S. military because you didn't mention U.S. troops and the war in Afghanistan in your nomination acceptance speech. Do you regret opening up this line of attack, now a recurring attack, by leaving out that issue in the speech? I only regret you repeating it day in and day out. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> because we just came from when you, give, when you give a speech, you don't go through a laundry list. You talk about the things that uh, you think are important. I have a yellow lab named Winston. I would no sooner put him in a kennel on the roof of my car than I would one of my children. Question, what were you thinking? <laughs> uh, this is a, uh, a completely airtight uh, kennel and uh, mounted on the top of our car. On the economy, he hides behind Paul Ryan's budget and calls it marvelous. On foreign affairs, he hides behind his advisors, most of whom work for George Bush. But on immigration, Mitt Romney is himself. And what do you get? You get pandering, you get prevarication, but what you don't get is presidential leadership. <laughs>